Hello cuties, I'm Paula from Powerlines and today we are going to be talking about my exchange year in Germany and everything that you need to know before moving to Germany. In case you want to or not. We'll see if I change your mind with this video. I hate dogs. Will I get a lot of hate for this? So this video is going to be divided in two main parts, life in Germany in general and everything that you need to know about Germans, the German city life and university. But before we get to the actual video, a little bit of a backstory. I have been living in Germany for the past seven months now and I have been studying at university mostly in English, German and Spanish. I study languages, so I'm taking languages modules for Spanish and English and then just the regular modules for all students at my university just in German, which is, again, for me, a foreign language that I've been studying for about two years at my home university. It was quite easy for me to find this university because for my home university in the UK, it is actually compulsory to go abroad for an entire year in your third year. I was a complete beginner two years ago. So my German level the summer before my exchange, my level was around B1, I would say. But then when I arrived at my university in Germany, I took another test and I resulted B2. I am still not sure that my level is B2, especially for speaking, but you know. Let's go with that. <laughs> anyway, although applying for this Erasmus year was a bit of a hassle, especially for paperwork, because let me tell you, there was a lot of it. But uh, thankfully, my university did most of the work. And because my home university in the UK is a partner of the university where I am currently in Germany, Although there was paperwork and I had to send a lot of documents, it wasn't as bad as usual, probably. But again, as I said before, it was very easy for me to choose my current university because as I study languages, there were really many universities that I go to that were famous for languages. I'm currently studying in Köln, but I could have also gone to Freiburg. Hello, this is Paula Hedeting and I have no clue why I said Freiburg because I'm not even sure that there is a university there. But anyway, the city that I meant to say was Gissen, which as I am about to say in a second is... Which I didn't decide for because it is literally in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. <laughs> That's just a little bit about me and how I got to Germany. I moved in September 2021 and I started university in October. So the semester has just ended in February and now I'm waiting to start my second semester, the summer semester in March. As I said before, I wanted to talk about how life in Germany is in general. I think I want to start with the people because I think there are a lot of stereotypes around Germans that are punctual and uh, very polite. Do I think that's true? Kinda. <laughs> I've been living for the past seven months in a Studentenwohnheim, which is a student house, and I live with two German guys and another girl that doesn't speak a word of German. But the two German guys could not be more different. One of them wakes up at around 12 or even later sometimes and just eats at very random times, has had multiple parties during weeknights where we have to go to uni, whereas the other wakes up at 7 every morning and is out of the house by 9 every morning and has like a clear routine and it's probably the most punctual person I've ever seen. So. Yeah. <laughs> in general, I would say people are quite polite when you go around, especially if they see you struggling with English. They usually know English, especially in big cities. So unless you specify, oh no, I want to speak German, they will probably try and speak English to you if they see that you're struggling. 
which sometimes can be beneficial, especially when you have just arrived and you're like, oh my god, I do not really understand the language, what's happening around me. But sometimes it's really frustrating because I want to try and use my German, the little that I know, and they just assume that I want to speak in English. So, you know, it has its pros and cons. One thing that I would say though is that I think I was very used in the UK and especially in Scotland, which is where my home university is, people are on another level of politeness. <laughs> Although German people are polite and they will maybe hold the door for you, but when it comes to do small talk, yeah, Germans are not really good at that. I think it's been a lot harder for me to meet people and make friends with people because it's really hard to start a conversation, I think, with a German person, especially if you don't really know German that well. Like, in Scotland, I remember I could talk, you know, it's a very British thing, but you could just be at the bus stop waiting for the bus and there would be that old lady, oh, the weather is so nice today. Worst impression of an old lady ever done, but you get the point. Whereas again, in Germany, it's really difficult to have those kind of conversations in the street and uh, even online, I would say. But I will talk more about meeting people at university in the second part. <laughs> Another thing that I feel like you need to know in Germany is the huge differences between cities and or the countryside and towns. As I said before, I live in Cologne and to be honest, I have been liking it so far. It's a really nice city, it has tons of transportation, the S-Bahn and U-Bahn are amazing. Buses, not so much, but anyway. Again, what you probably might not expect is that in the big cities like Cologne, Berlin, Munich, there might be really good transportation, there might also be a lot of traffic, but the downside of going into, for example, a smaller town is having little or close to none public transportation and probably very poor nightlife. I cannot tell you how good the nightlife is in Cologne because Covid, obviously, but I would say that's just something you need to be aware of. Especially because, as I said before, my two choices were Freiburg and Cologne, so you probably need to consider that you're gonna be spending six months or a year in Germany. I guess you do you, but I would suggest to try and find a good balance between transportation, traffic and, you know, general things to do in a city. My next point depends on where you're coming from, obviously, but I think you need to be aware everything will be a bit pricier in Germany. And I'm talking about food, things to do, there aren't even many free museums, for example. Eating out is okay, but accommodation can be really pricey. If you're coming from the UK, it's actually cheaper, but I would say I was really lucky with my accommodation because it's actually from a public company but I knew many other Erasmus students that had so many problems with their accommodations it costs a lot because they couldn't find public student rooms so they had to settle for private which obviously is gonna cost a lot more I would say if you're planning to move to Germany probably start looking in advance and if you cannot find something public maybe just search for families or elderly people that maybe have a room and can actually rent it for you for probably a lower price and this brings me to part two which is university life i have a lot to say about this first of all as i was talking about money and how supermarkets maybe are a bit pricier as well as accommodation i have to say Technically, education in Germany is free. In Scotland, as a European, I do not pay for university because it is offered by SAS. I hope I can make like a very nice animation here. I, I hope that this video would be sponsored by them. I love SAS, they are my life. Please continue funding my education. I love you guys. 
as I was saying, when everyone was telling me, oh, education in Germany is free, you don't have to pay anything, I was believing it, obviously, because that's what a normal person would do. But then I arrived to Germany and I discovered that for the entire year, you have to actually pay a fee for the winter semester and for the summer semester. And this fee depends on the region where you are. There are a lots of things included in this fee, but I think the only really good thing that it offers is your student ticket, with which you can actually take any public transportation in the city where your university is. And usually the area around for my university, it's the entire region, but it depends, I guess. But this fee was 300 euros, which I know might not sound like a lot, but for someone that thought that this year was gonna be again completely free, it was not. But anyway, to talk about university in general, I unfortunately have to tell you that, especially if you're coming from the UK, the workload is 10 times bigger. I think I have double if not actually more, <laughs> I think I have more than double the modules that I had in the UK for half of the credits. Which one could think, oh, but even if you have more modules, you only have like, what, a couple hours per week for each module? That is correct. But also, you have a couple hours a week, sometimes more, it depends obviously on the module and the what you're actually studying for each of the modules. And on top of that, there is a lot of independent work that you're supposed to do by yourself. Problem is, where is the time to do this work? I do not know. Because I have so many things to do for each module that sometimes it's just really, really hard to keep up. And with this, I'm not trying to discourage you from coming and enjoying Germany but it's just a matter of fact that if universities in the UK care a bit more for their students, it's really not the case in Germany. In the UK, maybe if you know your professor as well, they will email you asking how you've been doing, are you struggling with the amount of work? None of this happens in Germany. Another thing that probably nobody tells you about German universities is that actually not only you have to register yourself for the modules that you want to take, which you know, normal, we all do it. But on top of that, you actually have to register yourself for the exam of a specific subject that you want to take, which I know is something that also happens in Italian universities. I did not know that, but it's something so new to me because I've never had to do it in the UK. So I have no idea why, but you need to remember that probably in the middle of the semester, you actually have to email your professors asking how to register for exams or if there is a specific platform, for example, where you need to register. But it's something that you need to do yourself, just so you know. Totally not telling you this because I almost made that mistake. Lastly, as I said before, I kind of wanted to talk about doing university in Germany during COVID times. I don't know if it's my specific university, but during this past six months, I have been doing university purely online, which is probably why my last six months were probably a bit lonely, I would say. As I mentioned before, I think it's just really hard to make friendships and get to know people online when you're not in a classroom because there are some teachers, for example, that even disable the chat function or maybe they have it on but you can only message the teacher, for example. Which, you know, I get it, but again, doing that just prevents people from getting to know each other. And especially for Erasmus students, this past seven months I met some wonderful people, but they were almost all exchange students like me. I knew beforehand that it was going to be a lot more difficult for me as an exchange student to find German friends, especially because the modules that I'm taking are not for first year, but they're mostly for second or third year. 
So every German person that I meet through my modules, even if I you know, talk to them a little bit, they have their group of friends, it's a bit difficult to actually fit in. But I don't think that this is a problem just in Germany. With this situation, it can actually happen anywhere. And hopefully everything will get better. I'm supposed to have in-person classes starting from the next semester, which I'm really, really excited about. So in case you're planning to do an exchange year in Germany, maybe from next year, COVID will hopefully be a bit better and I'm sure that in-person classes will be so much better and so much more fun. But I think this is it for today. This was everything that you need to know before going to Germany. If you're planning to do an exchange year in Germany, let me know your experiences. Have you ever done an exchange year in Germany or in any other countries? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any updates from this channel. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay safe, drink lots of water and See you soon. Bye.